Hallelujah. If indeed all you can see is grace, lift up your hands to praise the giver of grace. Just give him praise. Give him praise. Worship him. Adore him. Adore him. His grace personified. He is the giver of grace. Adore his holy name. Bless him because you are alive by his grace. Bless him because your life is about his grace. Return all the glory to him. Return all the honor to him. Blessed be the holy name of the Most High. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You've got times and seasons in your hands. You called for light out of darkness. Yes, Lord. You don't need a man to be the God you are. You chose to call us your home. So, the unchangeable changer, the one who has times and seasons in his hands, you called forth light out of darkness. The light shineth in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend it. Father, we give you praise this morning for your faithfulness. We are alive by your grace. We are alive by your mercy. Please, Lord, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Unto you we have gathered this morning. We ask, O oh God, that you will please send your word. Let your word correct us. Let your word rebuke us. Let your word amend us. Let your word change us. Let your word transform us. Sweet Holy Spirit, take your place. Do that which only you can do. Glorify the name Jesus, that the Father might be glorified in the Son, and all the glory will be returned unto you. Thank you, ancient of this, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyone that knows is alive by the grace of God should shout, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please be seated as you welcome your neighbor to church. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10. Even as we continue in the series of the power of his grace. But by the grace of God I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Power of his grace. And this morning we'll be looking at 
your responsibility and grace. Hard work in grace and then how we can access his grace. A man of God once said, nothing is great and truly great without the grace of God. Grace is the qualification you need to move from one face to the other in life. In other words, grace is the signature on the currency of the kingdom for advancement. Grace makes all the difference. Uh, when Coca-Cola came and then 7-Up came later, their slogan was, the difference. Uh -huh. So, grace makes all the difference. Without grace, it will be impossible to go from one level to the other in life. Grace is the help given to us by God, not because of anything we have done to deserve it, but because God desires us to have it. And there is no child of his that has no grace. The only difference is that it is in measures according to your ability. Grace is the freely given love, freely given forgiveness, freely given acceptance and love of God. Grace is God's favor towards the unworthy, his benevolence on the undeserving. In other words, if his grace is in our lives, it is not that we are qualified to have it. But grace qualifies the unqualified. And so we should be thankful of his grace on a daily basis as long as we still breathe. And it is my prayer that his grace will not depart from our lives in the name of Jesus. I thought your amen will be louder. What is my responsibility? And what is your responsibility? According to 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 25, 1 Corinthians 9, 25, the Bible says, And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are incorruptible. Masteries in whatever field are gained by hard work. They are gained by labor. Grace covers the tracks of labor and makes one outstanding. In other words, if you want to gain mastery in any field, there is the need for hard work. Grace will now shield the hard work you have put into it, thereby making you outstanding. The hard work of yesterday does not guarantee tomorrow's success. It has to be continuous. In other words, you cannot say, yes, yesterday I worked hard, today I need to rest. It has to be continuous hard work to guarantee tomorrow's prosperity. And that's why when people labor and they die, leaving a legacy for the children, if the children do not work hard to sustain it, the wealth will disappear. Every day you live, you have a choice of two ways. The easy way or the hard way. The way of life and goodness or the way of death and evil. According to Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 15, it has been shown unto you, son of man. The two ways, way of life and goodness or the way of death and evil. And so, you have a choice. You have a role to play in grace. It's either you embrace it 
and you honor it, giving glory to the one that has disbursed it, or you abuse it and you allow it to go. Every day you live, you have a choice. The choices of yesterday that we made are what we are struggling, struggling with today. And the choices we will make today will affect our tomorrow. It is my prayer that the Lord will guide us in making choices. And we will not be obstinate in our thinking. I thought your amen will be louder. The easy way and the hard way. What happens on the easy way? The people on the easy road, on the easy way will say, it doesn't matter what I do. My paychecks will come at the end of the month. At least it is government work. I can do whatever I like. In other words, whatever I do in my place of work doesn't really matter. Whether I meet the target or not, as long as we are many, everybody's work is nobody's work. But then the salary will come. But can you check your life? As the salary, any sustainability, what have you used it for? Because God will only bless the one that comes with hard work. So let's watch it. Those of us who are working in whether state ministry or federal ministry. The easy way is that I can sleep early and wake up late. Because the doctors recommended that I should be sleeping for eight hours. Huh? That is the one that is good for my body. So that I won't be having migraine. <laughs> the easy way is the way of procrastination. There is still time. I can do it tomorrow. Forgetting that time is life. And that procrastination is a thief of time. The easy way is the way of no planning. And if you do not plan, that means you are planning to fail. The easy way is the way of no enthusiasm. Well, what will be with, will be? Oh, Sarah, Sarah. Is that not your song? Whatever will be, will be. Uh, uh -huh, see them. No plans. What will be, will be. Ah, life is not like that, brethren. And some will say, the water I will drink will not pass me by. That is if you walk towards it. The easy way is the way of the slothful. It is the way of pleasure. Proverbs chapter 10. We'll be reading some verses there. Proverbs 10, 4 to 5. The Bible says, He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. He that gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in harvest is a son that causeth shame. He that gathereth in summer and before you can gather in summer, that means you were not sleeping in winter. Before you can harvest in the dry season, that means you were not sleeping in the rainy season. You were planting. But then, the one that has no harvest is a shame. Then Proverbs 26, 13 to 15. Proverbs 26, 13 to 15. The Bible says, The slothful man said there is a lion in the way. A lion is in the streets. As the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth the slothful upon his bed. The slothful hideth his hand in his bosom. It grieveth him to bring it again to his mouth. Because he's too lazy to do anything. So many of us are waiting to be spoon fed. I don't understand. I don't even know how I can do it. I don't even know how I can go by it. Someone counsels you today and then your song is still the same. 
Are you not wasting away? The easy way is the way of starvation, the way of poverty, the way of desperation. Because when you do not meet up with your mates at the right time, you now become a desperado. I must make it at all costs, and you go the negative way. It is the way of frustration where you have wasted days, wasted weeks, wasted months, wasted years, culminating into wasted lives. Proverbs chapter 6, from verse 6 to 11. Proverbs 6, 6 to 11. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. Fasting and prayers will not bring riches. You can pray every 24 hours in a day for the whole year. It won't bring prosperity. There are principles to go by. The Bible says if any man will not walk, let him not eat. And there is also the principle of giving, which is the shortcut to prosperity. And when they are talking about giving, you say, I don't have the grace for you to... When the Bible says you should covet earnestly the best gifts. I don't have the grace to give. And even God understands he does not. Because he will not lower his standard because of anybody. We are talking about our responsibility concerning the power of grace. Hard work. For how long will you sleep? For how long will we be slothful? For how long will we be idle? When we wake up in the morning and all we do is to gist. While others are making it and you are saying, well, before any prayer is made in the church, you say, by God's grace. Ah, it doesn't work that way. God himself is a hard worker. So he does not like lazy people. May the Lord help us. I know your amen will not be loud. The hard way is the way of burning the candle at night, yet getting up early. The way of working with one's hands. The way of planning. The way of goal setting, the way of foresight and diligence. Proverbs twenty two twenty nine. 29, Proverbs twenty two twenty nine 29 says, Seeth a man that is diligent in business, he will stand before kings and not before mean men. But unfortunately, when we see others standing before kings, what do we say? Ah, only God knows what they have done. Ah, the kings are partial. no. Always look inwards and check your life. Proverbs 31, verse 13, talking about the virtuous woman, and if I may add, the virtuous man. Proverbs 31, verse 13 says, She seeketh wool and flax and walketh willingly with her hands. It's not that she was being coerced to do it. She was not forced to do it, but willingly, because she has a goal. She has a focus. She walketh willingly with her hands. Verse 15 and part A of it says, She riseth also while it is yet night. Many of us cannot even rise up to pray. 
not to talk of walking in the night. But then at times, we wake up in the night to, to do rubbish. Is MTN still having free calls at night? Sir, that one has stopped. Uh -huh. As at that time, that is when they make their calls because they won't pay. <laughs> she rises up while it is night. Then verse 18b says, Her candle goeth not out by night. In other words, she was busy. You will now be asking, does she ever sleep? Yes, she sleeps. But then, there is a goal that she has set and she must meet up with. But what do some of us say? I cannot come and kill myself, oh Jerry. Eh? Ah, now waiting. Let me rest. And if it is in the church, you will say, no, be me kill Jesus. Oh. At least I am not the pastor. <laughs> Forgetting that when we get before the throne, it is not about titles. It is about what we have done and the way we have spent our lives. It is about our relevance to the kingdom and the lives we have impacted. I pray that the Lord will help us. I thought your amen will be louder. The easy way leads to the bottom. That's when you say, I don't know what I have done. No. They are promoting other people and they are not promoting me. Is it my fault? Look inwards. But then if you are being oppressed, just know that God will fight the battle. The hard way leads to the top. The easy way rests on the foundation of sand. While the hard way builds a confidence that cannot be swept away by any storm. Jesus told a parable in Matthew chapter 7, 24 to 27. Of two builders, one that built on sand and the other one that built on the rock. The winds came, the storm came. The house on the sand crumbled. But the one on the rock stood Gidiba in the local palace. Tell your neighbor, where are you building your house? Is it on the rock or on the sand? Ask him or her. Did she answer? Uh, it is well. Hard work is a virtue. Mm, it is a virtue. A call to purposeful living. Don't just sit there. Manna no longer falls. Huh? Eh? It fell in the wilderness. It doesn't fall now. Even if God is going to package someone to come and help you, it must be as a result of something you have done. It is a call to purposeful living. Don't just sit there. Get up and do something with your hands. And when you are doing it, do it with all your might. Bringing into it your God-given intelligence, your God-given vision, your God-given gifts and power, and you will see it working. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 10 says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. There is no one that will not go six feet under. So don't say, I am not ready to die now. Even the imam in Abuja yesterday at the burial of those first men said everybody should be prepared to die. So if a Muslim is saying that, <laughs> it is well. God did not rest until he finished the work of creation. God did not rest until he finished the work of creation. Genesis 2, 1 to 2. Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. 
And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his works which he had made. He is the Almighty. Couldn't he have rested midway? Huh? But then he did not rest until he finished. Jesus himself said in John chapter 5 and verse 17, John 5, 17, that my father walketh hitherto and I walk. If Jesus, the custodian of grace, could walk out, then who are we? Not to work hard. Rest and relaxation are meant to be a reward for hard work. And then preparation for more hard work. In other words, when you are resting and you are relaxing, you should remember that you are not yet at the goal. And you will also be preparing for another one. There is no rest in this world though, uh, until we see him in glory. Be active to the Lord's business. Don't wait for him to give you instructions on doing what is right. Nehemiah took it upon himself. Nobody gave him any instruction concerning the walls of Jerusalem. He took it upon himself to build. And the Bible says in James chapter 4 and verse 17, James 4, 17, that to him that knoweth what is good and he fails to do it, to him it is sin. So when you come into the church and you see things that are not right, the chairs are in disarray, what do you do? You look back, Abby, where are the ushers? And when they say, is this your father's house, you'll be the first to raise up your hand. Yes, it is my father's house. And things are going wrong there. You could not say anything. Rahab, as a prostitute, was able to discern the times. She hid the spies when they came to spy Jericho. She was a prostitute, oh. But she was able to discern the times. And thereby, because of what she did, her name came up in the genealogy of the Lord Jesus. Prostitute. There will be surprises in heaven. Her name appeared in the genealogy of the Lord Jesus. I am not condoning the fact that she was a prostitute, so don't get me wrong. Uh -huh. All I'm saying is that even in her state, she was able to discern the times. And God can use anybody. If he could use an ass to speak unto the prophet, he can use anybody. Grace is abused. When one's life is lying fallow because of the availability of grace, ah, in fact, God's grace is good, oh. The grace is there, and your life is lying fallow. Then you are abusing grace. You do not wish a great business. Because if wishes were horses, beggars will ride. You do not wish a great career or ministry. You work it out and labor to maintain its greatness and make it outstanding. Grace is abused when instructions are not taken. God speaks how many times? Please answer me. Uh -huh. You are the one that will hear it twice. And the second one is what? It is an echo. So, once he has spoken and you did not yield, he will look for someone better that will yield to his instructions. Abuse of grace leaves the individual stranded and frustrated in the journey of life. How then do I access grace? How do I access grace? 
I pray for each and every one of us this morning that the grace of God over our lives will not be in vain. I didn't hear your amen. How do I access grace? Romans chapter 5 and verse 2. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace. We are in withstand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. God is opposed to the path of self-sufficiency because it is the path of pride. The mentality of I have arrived is a limitation to your destiny. God is pleased with the path of Christ's dependency and that is faith. Faith is the accelerator of grace. Nothing can be received except by faith. Wherever there is faith, there is God. And where there is no faith, mm -mm, God is absent. You can now imagine why peradventure your prayers have not been answered. Faith is a function of now. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11, 1. Acting on what you believe, not focusing on the challenges, but on what God says about them. And brethren, in these trying times, there is a struggle between reality and faith. There is a struggle between reality and faith. The reality there is that there is no money. And faith is saying, even as you labor, believe in God that there is money. Substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. It is not that you have not seen it in the spiritual. It's just that you have not seen it manifesting. But then already you are carrying the evidence and you are saying, God, I am grateful because you have done it. Hang on there in faith. Many of us sing, uh, standing on the promises of Christ my King, through it our knowledge is let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God. Help me to ask your neighbor. Are you standing on his promises? Mm. Are you not complaining already? Ah, God, are you still there? Eh? Why will you be sitting on your throne and you will allow me to suffer? Why will I walk and there is no reward? But check yourself. Or maybe you have not been paying your tithe adequately and as wet and as that went you. Maybe when you started that business, you did not commit your first fruit to him. Maybe when you are coming to church, you leave the bigger denomination and you bring out the smallest one and say, I'm not the one that killed Jesus. You see, you know. Look inwards. We have a high priest that is always touched by our infirmities. The Bible says he will not tempt us more than we are able. And even in that temptation, there is a way of escape. If there is a trial of faith, it is an examination for you to be promoted. It also takes humility on your part for God to change what he wants to change in your life. James chapter 4 and verse 6. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. But unfortunately, those who are even proud do not know that they are proud. They just know within themselves that, well, eh, at least by God's grace, I'm not in the same class with that person. By God's grace, I am lettered. By God's grace, I work in an oil company. By God's grace, he is even in the class of my messenger in the office. By God's grace, this, this, and that. 
That grace will vanish. Oh. Because before him, there is no class. There is no distinction. And whatever he has impacted you with, his expectation is that you will also flow out as a river with tributaries unto others to make their lives better. How will you meet him? Is it empty-handed? Apostle Paul, the apostle of grace, was passionate about all he did as a lawyer. That was why he got a letter. I must stone the Christians. He was passionate. And when he came into Christ, uh -uh, his passion doubled. He wanted to do more than what he did as a lawyer. Ah, this God that I have persecuted, I've persecuted his followers. I must be able to redeem the time. He was a dogged fighter of the faith. The question now to you and I is, are you useful? Am I useful in his hands? Can God count on you? Can he count on me? Job was not existing in the dispensation of grace, but then God was able to vouch for him even in the presence of Satan. Can he vouch for you and I that are in the dispensation of grace and he has bestowed his grace upon us but we are wasting it. How will we stand before him on that day? But then there is still a second chance for repentance. Shall we bow our heads? How have you been taking his grace? It is by his grace that you are alive. It is by his grace that I am alive. But looking back, don't let us go far. Since the first of May, today is the last Sunday in May. Oh, no. Second to the last. But this is the last week in May. Have you traded with the gifts and the talents in your hands? And can you present to him dividends this day? Why don't you go to him now and say, Lord, I am sorry. I am sorry. I know I have received your grace in vain. I know that this particular month, not to even go far, I have not dispensed that grace as you want it to be. Please show me mercy. Please show me mercy. If as God's children we are still failing in the way of dispensing grace, then I think all of us need to rededicate our lives to him and say, Lord, see me. Oh. I have no excuse. Today, Lord, please, a new and afresh take charge of my life. Help me, Lord, in your mercy. Help me in your mercy. Help me in your mercy. The choir, please. Help me in your mercy and make me a worthy vessel in your hands. Shall we rise? Saved by grace alone, this is all my plea. Jesus died for all mankind, and Jesus died for Saved by grace alone, this is all my plea. Jesus died for all mankind, and Jesus died for me. Can you?
you lift up your hands unto him this day and say, Father, every root of laziness, every root of pride, every root of being not challenged to your business, every root of slothfulness, Father, remove from my life today by fire. Are you sure you are praying? I no longer want to receive your grace in vain. I don't want to be judged and be condemned. Father, please help me. Help me. I need your mercy. 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 Masota libra kaba shata lideri ala kaba sota. Ah, are you sure you are praying? Le kari ala kaba sota libari ala kaba. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Bible says there is nothing we have that we have not received. Is it your intellect? Is it wisdom? Is it riches? Is it wealth? Whatever it is. But if you are not using it for the advancement of his kingdom, then you are not one of his own. Can you say, Father, this morning, help me to live a life of impact by your grace. Are you praying? Help me to live a life of impact. Help me to dispense your grace adequately. Help me, Lord, not to receive your grace in vain. Help me, O oh Lord. Help me to maximize every opportunity you give me. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And you are going to say, Father, let your grace be sufficient for my life. Let your grace be sufficient for my life. Let your grace be sufficient for my life on a daily basis. On a daily basis. In the name of Jesus. in the Lord. Father, we say thank you in the name of Jesus. We pray for our mommy, more of you in her, in the name of Jesus. Let your grace continue to be multiplied upon her in the name of Jesus. Our seven entire family, let your grace continue to be sufficient for them in the name of Jesus. Please, Father, grace for grace for her and ourselves that you release in the name of Jesus. 